What? What's there? Eh? What is that? He's saying hello to all friends? I've got nothing for you. Nothing today. You goaty creature. There you go. Come on, I've got a video to record. Bye now. <laughs> Bye now. Go and have your breakfast. There's some fresh seaweeds there for you. <laughs> God bless you. When I was a child, a long, long time ago, my, this is beginning to sound like one of those stories, when, when dinosaurs were still roaming the earth. Anyhow, when I was a child, a naughty child, like most children are, and they should be, I remember misbehaving when my parents had guests over and just, you know, trying to get their attention and put on a show, like most children do. But I do remember my, my parents, my mom in particular, looking at me and saying, in a very disciplinarian sort of way, now there will be none of that behavior with our guests around. There will be none of that talking in this household. And... Um, whether I liked it or not, I had to accept those rules because it was their households and these were the rules that they made and it was theirs to impose them. Why do I remember this today? Well, because a few videos ago, a very nice lady, whom I love very much, left a comment expressing her joy to see that our general comments are so much kinder and more civilized than they used to be two or three months ago. And I just did not have the heart to tell that nice lady that, in fact, nothing has changed in the world. And we still get the same horrid behavior and the same horrid threats and comments we used to before. What has changed is that I've grown a bit more into my parents. I've become more like my mother, may God help me. And now I'm, um, I'm simply deleting those comments with complete peace of mind and even a sense of satisfaction. I've grown a bit during this pandemic. And I've learned that some of the values I held and I still hold dear to my heart cannot just be applied uh, to everything and in any context. Uncritically is the word I was looking for. To be more precise, because I've, I've always loved art and I've consumed art and uh, I've studied and researched art since I was an awkward teenager in my parents' house, until a few years ago when I was an awkward monk at the university in Oxford. Because of my love of art, somehow I've grown to believe that there should be complete freedom of expression. You know, we are supposed to be able to do whatever we want to do, and we are supposed to be able to say whatever we want to say, because somehow in my mind that freedom of speech and behavior got associated with the freedom of an artist. What I failed to realize, but I'm slowly realizing, is that yes, an artist can create anything and has complete freedom in his or her ability to express themselves. But not all art and not all artists end up in the Metropolitan Museum of Art or in Tate Modern or in MoMA. There is critical thinking, there is censorship based on values that goes on before somebody's art becomes universally accepted art. Just the same way 
that my parents encouraged me to express myself and to read as much as I could and to write and speak and just basically express myself as much as I could. And yet they still censored me when my behavior got in the way or offended them, their values, or their household, their friends. You are our friends. And this YouTube channel is our house, our common portal, like, like an in-between space, caught between your worlds, your living rooms, and our world, our chapel. And because we share this household, I am going to impose the same rules that we impose on ourselves to everyone who is part of this conversation and who enters this household. So I'm going to tell you the same thing that my parents used to tell me. There will be none of that bullying behavior in this household, and there will be none of that uncivilized, filled with hatred, subhuman conversations going on. Because they are offensive to who we are, they are offensive to our values as Christians, they are offensive to our friends who come here to listen to us and who leave comments in good will and in good trust that we are going to protect them. And ultimately, because they are offensive to yourselves. You may not realize it, dear bullies, but they are offensive to yourselves. So here it is. I am sorry to disappoint that kind friend of our monastery. Nothing has changed in the world. The hatred is still there, the bullying is still there. But I've grown so much into my parents' skin, and I've become so comfortable in this skin, that um, I'm now having none of that behavior and none of that talk in our household. And another thing, before we end this video, to all of those who have uh, told us that we should not get involved in any sort of um, social issue like racism or the environment or abortion or xenophobia and everything and anything of that kind. I think the difference between you and I, you and this monastery, is that love does not allow us to ignore the world. We owe this world, we owe these people who are watching us so much. In fact, we owe you everything. Without you, this monastery would not exist. Without you, we would not be able to support ourselves and continue the work that God has entrusted us to do. We do not receive any help, any financial support from the state, from any church, any patriarchate. The closest Orthodox parish to us is in Glasgow, and that's about six hours away from us. So everything that we do is made possible by you. As long as we are part of this world, as long as we are not yet in a cave somewhere, and we are not in a cave somewhere, we are part of this world and we depend on this world, as I've said earlier, as long as that is the case, we have to act based on love. Not to speak about the things that affect you. Not to speak about the things that torment you and make you lose your peace and make you uh, wonder and question your faith and your behavior. Would be like, like us coming into your house, seeing you lying down, lying on your beds with some sort of sickness and completely ignoring your pain. There you are on your bed, in, in your suffering and pain, and I'm talking to you about, I don't know, about the meaning of the word light in the Old Testament. Or there you are after a dreadful car accident, and instead of me reaching out to help you, reaching out to give you a chance of life, I'm giving you a sermon or a homily on something from the Gospel. We are going to talk about the things that torment you. 
we are going to talk about the things that you need us to talk about. We are going to work our way through this life, through this horrible time, through this pandemic and through everything that the world throws at us together. This is not a mad monologue. This is a dialogue. And I know what pains you because the same things pain my heart. And I am going to continue to address those things as long as I have God's blessing and your support. I am in a hurry to finish because I see a friend approaching and I do not want that friend to eat me alive again. <laughs> there, there they are. Let me just switch this around. Hey! You're back? I think he knows that he can come and torment me every time I come here to record. He comes as well and he's the first one and then he brings his friends. Just like temptations. First there's one, then there's a whole collection of them. Anyway, God bless you. God bless you, dear ones. We carry you in our hearts. We carry you in our prayers. Thank you for your support. And may God bless and save us all. Amen. Amen. Amen.